Hello, this is Ashley Chaw speaking. Today, you will be learning about the elements of art. It is important to know these because it helps you understand and appreciate art pieces better. Of course, knowing these will also boost up your art score so that you can win those beautiful metallic medals. Well, here we go. The line is the most basic of art elements. According to USAD, a line is the path of a point moving through space. But I like what an art teacher once told me better. A line is a dot taking a walk. You see, lines can come in any thickness or width. In fact, a line doesn't even have to be connected. They can be interrupted as well, like footprints in the sand. These lines are specifically known as implied lines. Did you also know that lines can be used to express ideas and feelings? Horizontal and vertical lines can make you feel stable and static. Vertical lines cause your eyes to move upwards. No wonder cathedrals have such high ceilings, making you look upwards forces you to think of heaven. Well, I can go on and on talking about a line and how important it is, but I'm pretty sure you want to know what the other elements of art are. Next, I'll be teaching you about shape and form. Now, the most important thing you need to know about these two is how to differentiate them. Well, a shape is a 2D area of an object, while a form is three-dimensional. Both can either be geometric, precise and regular, or organic, based on living things, meaning that it's free-formed and irregular. Geometric shapes reflect order, while organic ones express movement and rhythm. The third element of art is perspective, which is the illusion of depth within a piece. Artists can achieve this by shading and placing objects lower on a picture plane to make it look closer and vice versa. They can also make things overlap or just give closer things more detail. A specific type of perspective is aerial perspective. Not the Little Mermaid aerial, but the atmospheric one. Anyways, this technique takes into account the way fog, smoke, and other airborne particles change the way faraway things appear. To achieve this effect, artists will make things in the distance lighter and less contrasting in color. The Renaissance, the Renaissance brought another kind of perspective too. It's called linear perspective, and yes, it's based on math. Basically, it says that things in the distance eventually converge and appear to vanish on the horizon. The next element of art is color. Okay, let's start with the basics. The word hue is simply the name of a color. There are three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and they make all the other colors. Secondary colors, which are made by two primary colors, are orange, green, and purple. And then you can go on and make tertiary colors by mixing a primary with a secondary right next to it, like blue-green. What I've drawn is the color wheel, which, is actu which was actually developed by Sir Isaac Newton a long, long time ago. There are two important variables that affect color, the amount of light reflected and the purity of the color. Value is the term I came close, I became close friends with in my R2 draw class. Basically, value is the lightness or darkness of a color. Artists play around with value when they add neutrals to hues. By the way, black and white are neutrals, not colors. The purity of a color, aka its brightness, is called its intensity. Unmixed colors are known to be the most intense. While and adding a neutral to a color will also lower its intensity. Lower its intensity, yeah. Warm colors are red, orange, and yellow, like the sun, and cool colors are blue, green, and purple, like the sea. Now, color can be local or arbitrary or optical. Local colors refer to the true colors of an object in normal daylight. Like, grass is green, even though in reality, it might look a little blue in the distance. Optical color refers to the effects of special lighting, like 
a candle or lights with green cover paper over it. Arbitrary colors is exactly what you think it is. A whole bunch of random colors and an explosion of expression and emotion. That's right, I know you thought that. <laughs> Anyways, this form of color has become more and more popular over the years. Moving on to the next element, texture is how things feel, or how we think they would feel. Artists who work with 3D stuff use the texture of their chosen material like wood or stone. 2D artists, on the other hand, have a little bit of a harder time with this element. They have to make it look like their art has texture to it. They can do this by using patterns of lines or shapes. They can use values. And in fact, if they don't use any contrast at all, their piece actually looks smooth. Composition is the final element. It refers to the artist's organization of all the other elements of art, whether it be on a plane like in a painting or just space for 3D pieces. It's just how it all works harmoniously together. And to be honest, that is art. You've just learned about all the elements of art, but wait, you're not done. This is just the beginning of your journey into the realm of art. In fact, the next thing you should learn are the principles of art and no, they are not the same as, ele as the elements. As Miss Cutlicky once engraved into my mind, I shall do the same to yours. Elements are the tools, principles are the rules. Now, go learn the rules and you'll be ready to understand any art piece you'll ever have to examine. Thank you for watching.